Take care. You eat star six. Come back on. Gary? Yeah, I got it. Not, am I back? Yeah, you're okay. okay. Yeah, good. Okay. Does anyone want to ask the question? Hit star six. Unmute yourself. When you get through, hit star six again. Is anybody saying anything? I've got a question. Okay. Milam County will uh, give a prayer if y'all would like to start with one. That's a good idea. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for letting us be here tonight and make our conversation well and, and convincing and uh, keep our connection secure. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. All right. Hi. Okay. Uh, um, I'm uh, challenging the jurisdiction of the probate court, and I'm um, going to appeal the, the decision of the judge. So I'm wondering about that filing fee. How do I uh, do? I make this uh, application for an appeal by mail, and then when they say you have to file a certain amount of money, because if I do that, I'll uh, then I send them back that says you don't have you don't. Um, uh hmm. You don't. It's not. You can't a- ask me hey, for that. Hey, what Eric says about that. Okay, when you say that, are you talking about the appellate court, or are you talking about the tax court, or are you talking about some other court? I'm talking about uh, the court of appeals here. For uh, appeal. If you don't pay the filing fee, they won't hear the case. Uh, no. That's a different thing than the tax court, then. Absolutely. The reason we didn't pay it on the tax court because they have an administrative side and they have a legal side. The problem is when you pay the if you pay the filing fee uh, for the tax court, the tax court will say we have no problem now. We're going to hear your case, but you owe five hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars. Once you get that paid, we'll hear the case. Then if we're wrong. You do a 1040, and they'll gladly give your money back. That's where the problem is, see, because you're letting the administrator administrate it. They have no jurisdiction. You have to be on the legal side. See, we have a right to the legal side. So you want them to make an administrative hearing on the on the uh, uh, appellate court, so you pay the filing fee. Okay, okay. Thank you for that distinction. I appreciate your help. No problem. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you. Next. This is Randy from Washington. Okay. Um, I had talked to Ed, uh, I think, last summer. Ed, you're on the line, correct? I'm on the line. line. Yeah. And uh, if I remember talking to somebody last summer, though. Uh, this is Randy from Washington. Now I'm on the CAFR report with you. Anyway, uh, yeah, um, yeah. I uh, had talked to you uh, last summer, and I was in the process of going through the statutory courts uh, with an IRS lien, trying to get it taken off. And uh, the fellow I was working with decided uh, he wasn't going to listen to me about going to the U.S. tax court, like you suggested. And he wanted to just go ahead and win this case in the statutory court, which, of course, he went to the U.S., uh, the Court of Appeals, Ninth Circuit, and lost. So since that time, I went ahead and filed that petition you told me to file last summer, and I put that paperwork in. Now now that it's already been decided in the Ninth Circuit, uh, is that going to be a problem now, uh, putting this case in with the U.S. District, U.S. Tax Court, those four pieces of paper with the petition that I sent in without filing fee, well, will I still have a chance at getting this thing taken care of? That's my question. 
היום. אוקיי, you ask me or Ed? I guess I'm asking you, because you're the one that's uh, yeah. actually running this. Appreciate it. Okay. A has nothing to do with B, okay? So what we're doing is the reason we're going to the tax court is to get the order. With that order, you're able to do anything else you want. You take the order and you beat them over the head with it. You go to the order and you, you can have anything removed. If they won't remove it, Now you have an argument. If you go to the United States District Court with the IRS, they, the District Court does not have jurisdiction on tax issues. So they can't hear the case. But they can hear a case that has a federal uh, uh, case attached to it. So if you go to the, if you go to the, uh, to the tax court, get your order, Then if you sue the IRS, you can sue the IRS in um, federal district court, but it's not about taxes. It's about the court order. See? So what you've done is you've changed the uh, spotlight onto a different area because what happens is um, if they don't have jurisdiction, they'll, you'll never win it because they'll drag you on. They'll, they'll, um, they'll deny and delay until you're free. until you're busted. They'll, you'll, they'll deny and delay until you're on the street with nothing. Then they'll step in and say, well, we're going to dismiss it because they're no good, see, and where that's where the problem is. So A won't have anything to do with B, but you'll be able to use B to get A taken care of. Does that, have, does that make sense for you? It makes a lot of sense. I appreciate your answer. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for being here and calling. Thank you. Next. Steve Costa, are you still on here? Yes, I am. Can you bring bring up what the, you just got back, or does it have to be? Yeah, Kerry, what they did is we sent that cease and desist. Uh, to those entities that were still taking uh, money out of the um, the checks and the Office of Personnel Management sent everything back including all the documents we sent them the cease and desist the court orders the motion to dismiss along with a cover letter uh, requesting the more information um, name and address birth birth date social security number uh, and then former spouses information and social security number I just got this back yesterday right so I'm thinking okay, I'm just going to send it all back to them what court is it from the Well, we got the, the court order from the tax court. Okay. Um, that's what you need to do a cover letter and lead with that, in my opinion, because the court order and the motion that you got that created that court order, that's what I would use. Now, what we're yeah, doing, because these people are stupid, get a highlighter and highlight the pertinent parts so that when you open it and it says, the respondent highlight respondent and go to the top and highlight respondent that's the commissioner <clears throat> and highlight that sentence where they didn't give you a notice of deficiency and notice of determination highlight that thing then do it on, then do it on the uh, order highlight the same spot that says it now you've got it and you, and you put it in there um, you know you don't have jurisdiction see a uh, highlighted document and close for your convenience that's what we're doing because because the Uh, it comes back it's usually a five page uh, order I mean a, a motion and a one page order well these people they can't read so we're highlighting it that way you're highlighting you're going to have maybe a half a page highlighted that's all and yeah, then when they that's read, what I did okay. and I sent it to them and they sent everything back that's fine 
then what you can do now, if you feel like it, go to the uh, 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 federal district court on the fact that, that, they, that you have a documented court order, but before you do that, go on the United States District Court's w- w- website, and f- there's a jurisdiction tab, and you'll see it. Th- there's something there about jurisdiction, and it has a picture of the courthouse. It's blue. When you open it, it lists everything that they have, and in there it lists other federal court orders. That, then I would put that in there. You know, you have jurisdiction because under your jurisdictional statement, you state that court. Uh, you know, and put that there. Now you now you're going to move forward, and then just send it off and send it with a of a, 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 a uh, former pauperist and tell them that you don't have any money. So you know, and they'll give it to you that way, and then and then file that against them. We just got to keep the IRS on defense because they make a lot of mistakes on defense. On offense, they make a lot too, but we're but we're always on on defense. That way, you 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 can sue the IRS because uh, because it's not the IRS you're suing. You're suing their policies and procedures. So so they didn't have jurisdiction, then they're still moving forward. So they're violating their own policies and procedures. And so that's how you want to you wanna approach this. Does okay. that make sense? Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand. See? So, so don't get – okay, I've asked this question a lot of times, if you will, because I get confused. How do you spell more? Well, it depends. No, okay. Then it doesn't depend on anything. How do you spell more? Spell more, and then I'll tell you which whether that's the right one or not. M O O R. No, L E S S. And the reason I say that, less on your document gets you farther, so it's more. In other words, if you can write your lawsuit to the federal district court and do it with three pages and you put four pages down there, you're shooting yourself in the foot. So less is more. Always remember that. If, you're gonna, if they write you a letter and you're going to answer it, don't write a 575-page brief because you want to tell them everything. Do it in one page. If you can, if you can and not, you always can't. So always remember, less is more, because if you get a document and it's 500 pages, you're not going to read it. You're going to skim through it. You don't have time to read it, nor do they. So get it all done. When you file your lawsuit, you can add to it as you go. You're going to, you're going to go ahead and do a notice to them telling them that you're going to go ahead and sue. When you do, you, just go, you go in there with one deal, one argument. The argument is you have a, you have a certified court order saying the IRS admitted the commissioner said they didn't have jurisdiction. That yet they're still moving forward, and then CC the uh, you're going to sue them, but you're going to sue the 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 the, the uh, commissioner and just sue the commissioner again, because now he's he's in contempt of court because he's the one that told you they didn't have it. Correct. See, so don't so where the problem comes is you want to you know. I, I'm the same way. We all we're all emotionally tied to this because you worked your whole life. Now you're ready to quit. But don't go in there and say the, the IRS, the pricks did this, and them sons of bitches did that. We don't care about that. What matters is they violated. And 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 anytime you can say policies and procedures, you're better off than you than you saying the law, even though that is the law. And the reason for it is I have run into these. Uh, these yahoos, and they say, well, I'm not an attorney. Since I'm not an attorney, I can't make a legal determination. So they throw it out for stating a claim that really can't be granted. So you try to keep it as pointed as you can, but yet generic enough that they, they, they don't have nowhere to go. Sure. Wow. Okay. Okay. And so what you try to do is, is when you write a question, you know, you ask the question that if they say yes, they're screwed. If they say no, they're screwed. If they don't answer it, they're screwed. And that's how you try to graft all this stuff up so that no matter no matter what they answer, they're shooting themselves in the foot. And the reason for it now is, see, 
Now, when there's another court we're taking you guys to that are going to get all your money back, but now we just we just need more you know we just need more proof. Okay. And if you need help with that or an idea, I'm not real good with paper, but I'm really good with ideas, and 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 I'm I've got a talent on finding the connecting the dots. I can connect the dots real easy. So if you need help connecting the dots, I'll be more than glad to help you. Okay, I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for being here tonight. Okay. I have a question. So what? We're not. We're not. We're not here tonight for you. Oh, okay. I'm kidding. Go ahead, bud. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, my, Go ahead. <laughs> I have a question regarding uh, um, the U.S. Task Court because I use your procedure and uh, file uh, for lack of jurisdiction, and they responded and uh, denied my case. And that was in August. So what did they I, deny your, wait a minute, what did they deny your case for? Uh, they said that I did not pay a fee. Okay, we have an so, answer for that. We have an answer yeah, for that now. Yeah, I used that document that uh, specifically, specifically says give an answer for that and send it to them. Uh, what they are saying is that I waited too long to send it to them, and so my case no initially problem. had passed 30 days. So we'll they sent me okay, a denial. Then, then, then what you do? Send another, open another case. Go in there and and, and open another case. And okay. use that document. That this time, use that document in your part of your case. In other words, tell me you never you, you never received a notice of deficiency. I never received a notice of determination for the following years, and put them down. And then in there say, and um, because of that, uh, we have free access to the courts. Then put that document with it, and then uh, the, t- go going in, file it going in. That, the one okay. that I gave you has. has it has the state and the feds on it. Now they're a federal court, so take the state part off. If you need it, we'll. If you need it, we'll go back and do it later. But there's no reason to. Again, you know, let's not give them too much because um, the, the people that I'm dealing with, they're not too bright. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, they, 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 you know, they got a lot of power, but, but uh, that's all they've got. You know. And so we're trying to defang them the best we can for you. And, and um, like I said, they're they're um, they're not happy about it. But but uh, you know, I'm not going to get invited this year to the IRS's Christmas party, probably. <laughs> so, what do you think? Because in in this case here, they said petitioner's motion to vacate, and then they stamp U.S. Tax Court denied. You're saying that I should create a new. Um, Docket and okay, you went the, back. Oh, wait a minute. You went back, and they said they weren't going to let you do that because you've gone past. That case is closed. Isn't that what they told you? Yeah, that's what they said. Okay, so what are you going to do? You're going to stand and look at it and cry? No. No, no. I I wanted to create a new case, uh, but they were saying go. that they were saying that I cannot file a case for this same period. Because I was filing the case for 2013. See? Um, Wait a minute. Can I ask you a question? mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Are they your friend? Now, what I want you to do, I don't want you to, okay, I don't want you to eat for the next three months. Don't eat nothing, okay? (laughs) No. Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? (laughs) Because that's not possible. (laughs) Okay. Now, if you don't, that's not possible. You have to file it again. If you don't file it again, guess what? See? Yeah. Don't get into I got the old it. stuff. It's already de- it's okay. Um, if you ru- if you're driving your car down the road and you run out of gas, you can push it to the side and sit in the car until until somebody comes by and gives you gas, or you can walk down to the gas station, put it in a tank, and pour it in and get going. See, right. so you're just yeah. gonna, so you're just going to have to redo it. I agree. Now, yeah. Why did they tell you not to do it? Do you think? Um, because they want to stop me from the, getting the remedy. Duh. <laughs> That's right. See. 
So, so doesn't it make sense to go back? Where, where they're having problems with me is as soon as they tell me not to do something, guess what I do? You do it. <laughs> well, that's just me. You know, yeah. They told me not to do this anymore, but we're still doing it. They've told me not to do, it, to do other things, and I'm still doing them. But because they tell me not to do it, they're kind of giving me a hint. Maybe I'm looking in the right direction. See? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so what you need to do is take the part on there about the state. Take that off because when you go into the court for the first time, they're a federal court. Just leave the federal part about the Constitution on that document and just put it in. Okay, but don't attach the previous case, just a new case, right? Yeah, just yeah, because they've already closed that case. Right. If they, you okay. know, if you want to try it, try it again. Send it in. That's fine. Send it okay. in again. But but they're gonna what they're gonna do is they're gonna say this case is closed. See? So then you're gonna have to wait another two or three weeks. So that's just my opinion. I would take the forms and redo them. Okay. Thank you, sir. Oh, no, thank you for being here. I, I, I appreciate you uh, asking me the question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Terry, I got a question. So what? Tonight's not your night. Go ahead. Yeah, you've got to be. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Go ahead. Okay, my situation is last December I got four different documents from the IRS for 2009, 10, 11, 12. They added up 20700 I have not heard from them in four years. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, I had hear about eight years ago, I had 304000 stolen from me. I filed it with the IRS, okay. and they said I could write it off. Okay, what do I do? What documents did I send to get this thing to roll in that don't have jurisdiction? Okay, did you go to the tax court? No. Oh, I sent a lot of letters to Washington, okay. D.C., and that judge up there not, never received that's not, any. That's not, that's not what I said. Did you go to the tax court? No. Okay, if you, the only thing that I'm doing is I'm showing you how to go to the tax court. When you go to the tax court, the IRS is going to say they don't have jurisdiction. The reason they don't have jurisdiction because they're violating their own policies and procedures. Now, I want to ask you this question. You have a $5 billion lien. Who makes the lien valuable? They do. You do. You do. You're the surety. Now, think about this for a minute. Who makes a notice of lien valuable? It's a $5 million notice of lien. Who makes the notice of lien valuable? Uh, if they go to court and get a judge, nobody would. Nobody. Absolutely nobody. That's why they're in trouble. They're monetizing a notice of lien. They're calling it a lien. Guess what that is? That's fraud. Okay. I've got a I've got a Siamese cat and I call it my um, my pit bull terrier. I'm lying. It ain't a pit bull. It's a Siamese cat. That's what they're doing. They ca- got caught with their hand in a cookie jar. They're monetizing a notice of lien. That's their problem. Now, why did you get a notice of lien? Because they didn't do a 23C. The 23C will give you a lien. They have the right to do a lien. The problem is they won't sign it properly. They won't, they won't certify that it's true and, and, and factual. Well, the reason they won't do that is um, um, because that, everything they do, they're tethered to fraud. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to answer it if you can or if you will. Okay. Does a United States government employee have to pay taxes yes income taxes why did you say that okay why did you say that because u.s government employees which i am not i don't have to pay it but they do stop right there what you just did is you're telling me the status does it now when they fill out a 1040 form what is the 1040 form based on status federal employees it's Federal based employee. on what? Nope, it's based on income. Am I correct? 
Yes, the federal employee. Stop again. The federal employee, the income is not defined. Okay? You're going to pay, you're, you have to pay 30% of all the strawberries you, you get paid in. Well, I don't get paid in strawberries. Well, you're a federal employee, so you have to pay it anyways. Well, that's not what it says. The 1040 is an income tax return. The word income is not defined in the 1040 nor the 1040 instruction booklets. Therefore, how can you charge the federal employee income tax on something that they don't know what it is? Now, I want to ask you a question. Where do you live? In what state, if you don't mind me asking? Texas. Okay. I live in the DFW area. I need you to run to Arkansas and pick me up 400 dublator switches. I, they're, they're, they're $2. I'll give you $25,000 for every dublator switch you put in your truck and bring to me. Pay you in cash. Can't happen. That's not possible. Why is that not possible? Because you're in the DFW area. But you, I want you to drive to Arkansas and pick them up for me. Bring them back, give them to me, and I'll give you $25,000 for every dubulator switch you bring in. Not possible. Why? Okay, tell me why it's not possible. Because you're in the DFW area. So what? What does that mean? See, you're doing status again. My question is, what's a dubulator switch? Don't know. They don't exist. That's a, I made up that word. It's made up. So you, I'm paying you $25,000 for every dubulator switch. So I'm telling you, you brought me five of them, so you have to pay tax on $50,000, let's see, $100,000. You have to pay $100,000 worth of income tax. Why? On the dubulator switches. They don't exist. They're not defined. It's impossible for you to pay tax when a dubulator switch doesn't exist because that's what your income is developed on. That's what I'm trying to tell you. See? I've been told okay. that has it, I started. Go ahead. How do I get the ball to go in and put it into uh, tax court? Well, we'll get to you in a minute. We'll, I'll, I'll, I'm going to tell you that before I get you off. But I was told, I started this in 1988, and I was told, never go to the tax court. Now, um, you're a non-resident alien, so what you can't do is, is federal employees have to pay income taxes. You have to do a 1040. So I read the frickin' book. In the book, the word income does not appear. In fact, if you go to the 1040 and find where it says total income, it's on line 8, I believe. Or the book, go to, in the book that it says line 1, line 2, line 3, go to line 8. That doesn't, it's not even there. It doesn't exist. So what the heck is total income? Now, here's the kinds of income I figured out. There's federal, state, taxable, non-taxable, gross, net, and total. There's eight kinds of income. Which one of those do you pay tax on? The total is... Um you have to define the word total. There, okay. So you have to pay it on all of them. No problem. The word income doesn't even appear in the 1040 booklet. So what is income? I'm asking you, what is income? It's unknown fact. What? It's unknown what the income is. No, no, it's not. See, they're not telling me what it is, so I'm going to tell them what it is. See? It's when you eat hot dogs with no bun. Well then, I'll just I'll just start throwing the bun in the trash. See, in other words, if you if it's not defined, dubulator switches don't exist. How are you going to go and get dubulator switches? What are you going to ask for? Dubulator switch? What is? It? I don't know. Well, I need twenty five of them. What are they? I don't know. See, that's what they're doing to us. It's not the fact that you're a non-resident alien. That doesn't matter. See. Well, okay, if you sign a 1040, is that a contract to make you pay the following year? No, because they didn't sign on that side. There's no contract. See? So 
if if they've taken money from you and you do a 1040 and you've got money coming back uh check out our other videos and playlists uh republic of texas rt documentary texas and other american states is under a military occupation uh the republic of texas forum of 2016 and uh describe the kind of people who would thrive in independent texas and so check them out then do the freaking thing and get your money back because <clears throat> what are they going to do tell you you can't do that well, you didn't sign one last year, so we're taking the money from this year. That's the problem. So what we have to do is understand what we're doing. Now, I want to ask you another question. If you're staying on the roof of your house and you slip and fall, tell me what's going to happen. The pull of gravity. I'm going to hit the ground. Nope, not necessarily. You might hit a branch. You might land on a bush. Uh, you might grab the gutter. You might have a mattress down there. What I'm trying to tell you, you might land on the roof of your car. So, yeah, the roof is the roof is twelve to twelve. You're going to be on the ground. Again, you're heading towards the ground. That's right. Why is that? Gravity. The law of gravity. Now think about this. Wonder if you're a non-resident alien. Wonder if you're a uh, federal employee. Wonder if you're a uh, drop of marble. Your dog. Wonder if your wife falls. The law is the law no matter what. In other words, the law of gravity, no matter who falls off the roof, heads down. Period. That's the law. That's all I'm saying. When you read the 1040 booklet, when you read it, if it tells you in there, and it does, it tells you this, it says you have to, you don't have a choice. You have to file a return or statement. Now, what is a return? It's a statement that you're going to file back to nope. the IRS. No, nope. no, nope. a statement is a statement. We'll get into that in a minute. What is a return? I don't know. See, it's not defined. See, it doesn't say tax return. It says return. What's a return? Okay, I shit in a bag. I staple it. And I put your name on it. And I mail it to you. I returned it. What did you return? A bag of shit. I understand that. Okay. Now, now, what is a statement? Bite me. <laughs> well, oh, wait a minute. I, I feel like Bite we're just me. Going, That's a statement. I feel like we're Bite. going around and around, around and rosy, around and rosy. I want to know the document to file. Look, I'm not trying to be smart. I've lost okay. my home. I paid for it four times. I had $112,750,000 in property all blew away when they foreclosed. I have nothing. It was all stolen from me. I just didn't know the document. The document? Okay, go. Okay, are you in front of a computer? I've got my iPad right here on my knee. You want me to pull up the, okay. the 1040, look at page uh, 110? No. no, I want Please. you to go. I'm trying to give you the document. Go to the U.S. Tax Court. Dot okay. Ed, do you have those? Uh, yeah, tax court dot go. Oh yeah, I got them. Okay. See <laughs> now they're on the tax. They're on the they're on the tax court's uh, web page. And and when you go in and go to uh, where it says um, forms, forms and instructions, then go down there until you read it. It's, it's going to say um, tax. Um, Petition. petition, petition package, or something like that. There's now, your, there's all your documents right there. And now Ed's got a John Doe that will send to you, so you know what, what what line goes where and how to sign it, what to put and where to say it. Then you mail it to the uh, tax court. The tax court now will give you what you need to get all of your stuff back. There is a court that will give it back to you. Okay. Okay. Now I want to ask you a question. I'm only I don't know how many there are. Let's say there's one million courts in the United States. That's all fifty states, state, federal, counties, everything. How many of those million courts percentage wise has limited jurisdiction? I think all of them. You're exactly right. Now, let me show you what I'm trying to say. 
You cannot get a divorce in a federal district court. Why? They don't have jurisdiction. Now, here's the real kick in the pants. How do you give a federal district court jurisdiction to give you a divorce? How would you do that? In which court? Federal district court. It, it's not happening. They don't have a jurisdiction. It's impossible. But what if you? But what if you say I give it to you? I'm going to pay the filing fee. I'm going to. They still I'm can't gonna, do it. I'm they, still... they can't do it. They don't have it. So here's the question: If the IRS doesn't have jurisdiction. What can they do? Nothing. There you go. That's where I would start. Once you get that, then when you get a summons or you get a letter in the mail, you take that and you stick it in the thing and mail it back. Because, see, the IRS can only do what they can do. Now, I went to court the other day, and I was was acting a fool like I do all the time, and uh, I challenged jurisdiction. The judge says, we have it. I said, I want to see it. He says, I said, I have it. I said, I don't care. I said, my wife said she loves me, too, and I don't know that. I want to see the jurisdiction. He calls the bailiff up front, show him jurisdiction. So the bailiff pulls his jacket back and taps his gun. I said, wow, the bailiff has jurisdiction. I said, to, I said this to the, uh, to the judge. I said, you dumbass, where's your jurisdiction? He's got it. I said, take your gun and give it to the judge so he'll have it. He said, that's enough of that. I said, I won't ask again. Where's your jurisdiction? I saw the jurisdiction of the, uh, uh, of the uh, bailiff. But he can't make a legal determination. Only you can. He said, that's enough. So then I, see, so then I started, then I started acting a real like a fool. See, he would tell me, he said, are you done? No, sir, I haven't started yet. What are you talking about? I said, yeah, I know what you mean. Then I just started. See, now it becomes a fiasco. What he ended up doing is he found me guilty. Then I sued him because he said I was guilty. I had to pay something, but I didn't know what to pay it with. So now we got a whole other uh, uh, avenue that he's opened up for me. So, you know, we're having – see, we're on, I'm on offense. I ain't on defense. So – the offensive move is to go to the tax court, get your court order, and then go get your stuff. So when you do it, it's going to ask you. You're going to tell that I'm there. It, 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 you you did uh, you didn't receive a notice of deficiency or notice of determination, and you're going to pick a group of years. That way, you get your stuff back. If they didn't have jurisdiction and they took it, guess what? They have no options. They have to give it back. And there's a court that has limited jurisdiction to give it back. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, if you get a speeding ticket, can you go to the um, federal criminal court? Uh, Can you go to the federal district criminal court to have your speeding ticket uh, dismissed? No. Why? Because it falls under municipality. See? See? Every court has jurisdiction. That's why this is effective. Just like when you fall off the roof, the same thing happens to you. It happens to Ed or it happens to me. So what we have to do is get in the proper court with the proper paper. With the and, and guess what? They're gonna they come they it it slings them apart because if they make a stupid mistake, then we can appeal. When you appeal, you don't appeal because your, your, your left toe is, it hurts on one foot and it don't hurt on the other side. You appeal on the fact that you challenged jurisdiction. They didn't prove it. That's it. Now, they're going to take it up to the next court. The next court, you're going to have to pay the filing fee then or do a pauper's. But now you have a, you're, you're, you're appealing the court's decision on the grounds they didn't have jurisdiction. And if they did, they didn't pr- prove it. Therefore, they acquiesced it to you. <laughs> See, that's what they do to us. That's an offensive move. Well, how, many so, days do you, how many days is that? 30 days? 30 days to what? Acquiescence. It doesn't matter. It, 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 acquiescence doesn't tell you. Now, is it speeding? Is it uh, divorce? Is it child support? Is it uh, taxes? See, I don't know. See, 
everything <clears throat> everything has a um, uh, expiration except murder and fraud. There might be something else, but but see, it doesn't matter to me. I just do it. I don't care. See, once you file it in the court. They have 21 days to answer you. If they don't answer you, then put in a, a motion for some uh, a default judgment. Why? Because they didn't answer you. See, it, it's okay. their rules. The rules tell you that. You'll have to go to their rules and read it and put it in there. You know, but you file a you file a an appeal. When you file the appeal, they'll come back and give you a package. You do a notice of appeal, then they'll send you a thing in the mail saying, "Okay, you have 21. You have 15 days." to file your your suit, then they have 21 days or 38 days or 26 days to answer you. Or 21 days from the first Monday past the second Tuesday of the third month or however they do it, they'll tell you. That's, that, there's your guideline. There's your map. Then just follow the map. Once you file your, law, once you file your appeal, don't get into all this, <coughs> my mother's brother's aunt, sister's third cousin's boy. It's, they didn't have jurisdiction because they didn't prove it, and then pinch it down. There's that less is more. The less you give them, the more power you have on it. Because if you say they don't have jurisdiction and you're a non-resident alien and you have flesh and blood in your veins and, see, now they, all they got to do is say, hey, we got jurisdiction on this, and, 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 and they're done. Does that make sense to you? Yes. I appreciate okay, your now, time. I've taken up a lot of no time. Problem. It's okay. Don't that's, worry about that. That's okay. We, we, we'll, we'll take as much time as it takes. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. They have in personam, that's personal, and in rem, jurisdiction. Which one's the most important, in personam or in rem? Which one's the most important? I believe it's in rem. No, sir. So, so which persona, one? That's, that's me. That'd no. Be persona, be me. No. Absolutely not. So which one's the most important? Persona. No. See? You got to have both. I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to gouge your eyes out, one of them. Which eye, do you, which eye is the most important? Neither one. They're both the same. You got to have them both. So they have to, when you say challenge jurisdiction, they have to have both. <clears throat> See? Now, which one's the easiest for them to pertain in persona? I'm sorry, in REM. That subject matter. In persona, we have the Bill of Rights that says we have unlienable rights. They can't get they can't get in persona on you no matter what they do. They just can't get it because they're going to lean your rights. It's unconstitutional. See, it's simple now. The argument's simple. Do you have jurisdiction? Yeah, let me see it. Uh, well, I don't have to. Okay, then I want my, I, I told the IRS the other day, I, they called one of the guys I was working with, and he says, um, I said, I didn't, we never got a notice of deficiency or notice of determination, so I don't want to hear it from you. Give it to me. He says, it's not important that you get it. It's only important that we send it. I said, I knew that. I should have known that. I said, what are you sending me his uh, uh, change? You said he owes 300000 We wrote a check for a million bucks and sent it to you. When, when, when are you going to send us our change? He said, what are you talking about? It's not important you got it. It's only important that we send it. I verified he sent it. You better send us our money because if you don't, I'm taking you to court and we're going to. He said, it don't work that way. I said, you're right. I agree with you. Since it don't work that way. Send us a notice of, and anyway, the, the, the conversation got out of hand, not with me, but with him, because, see, they tell you something, and we just go along with it. Does that make sense to you, for you? Yeah, yes, I got one question to ask you. Okay, Absolutely. I had, okay, I had $304,319 stolen from me. I filed it with IRS's stolen money. The IRS okay. said, "Okay, okay, we'll let you write it off." They came back and said, "You owe sixty-one thousand." I said, "I never touched the money. You cannot tax me on that." Okay. Now yeah. wait a minute. See what you're doing? Okay, then I'm going to ask you a question. What's money? 
with the green stuff and stick in your pocket. Absolutely not. Black's Law Dictionary, you look up Federal Reserve Note, it says it's a medium of exchange, but it is not money. So what's money? Gold and silver. No, that's constitutional money. I didn't say See, the problem is you don't know what it is, so how do you know you didn't have it? See, in Modern Money Mechanics, page three, it says checkable liabilities of a bank is money. So if it's checkable liabilities of the bank, I go to the bank and I write a check and give it to the bank, and they give me whatever they give me. I don't care. No matter what it is, they give it to me. It's no longer theirs. It's mine. Once they give it to me, it's, it ceases to be money because money is checkable liabilities of the bank, not checkable liabilities of Kerry, checkable liabilities of Bob Smith or whatever. See, what the problem is because – so I don't care what they say. See, my answer to everything – let me ask you a question now. Have you stopped poisoning your neighbor's dog? I never poisoned the neighbor's dog. Well, they told me you did. Well, they're just wrong as hell. See what you're doing? You're defending a negative. Ask me the same question. I'll show you. This is what I try to try to get you. Okay, ask me the same question. You poison your neighbor's dog, your parakeet, cat, and wife and all that? In other words... No, I don't. You, I asked you, when did you stop? What, what, uh, are you still poisoning your kid? You said, did you? See, you got to ask it proper, and this is what they do. So ask me, have you stopped poisoning your neighbor's dog? That's have you question. stopped poisoning your neighbor's dog? Man, I'm glad you asked me that. Which neighbor? See? I By your saying. silence, yeah. I assume you're full of horse manure. Which neighbor? I understand what you're saying. See? So if you tell me, well, the neighbor on the right, I'm going to say, man, I'm glad you asked me that. The funny part of this is my neighbor on the right doesn't have a dog. Okay, the one on the left. Well, you don't have a dog either. See? That's an offensive move. See? I said, have you stopped poisoning your neighbor's dog? You said, I'm not, I haven't poisoned my neighbor's dog. Why are you defending something you can't defend? See? So let's turn it around. Okay, so what we're trying to do is turn it around. So go to the tax court. When you get your document from the tax court, then we can go get your $325 million, whatever it was, 300000 whatever it is. There's a court that will take your tax court document and convert it to a, to a judgment. Now, have you? And I want to show you how it works. Have you ever filed a 1040 in your life? Had an yes. overage? Okay, no wait. And the IRS sent you a refund check. Has that ever yes. happened to you? Okay, yes. I want to speak to you again because you're lying to me. That can't happen. That's never happened. Well, I was Who holding them in my hand. Okay. Who? Who sent you the money? The check? Where did the check come from? You know, come think of, I think it was the U.S. Treasury. See? Th- see? That's the problem. That makes sense to me. So we're going to go to a court. You're going to get it. You're going to get a judgment. Then you're going to go to the Treasury. Then the Treasury is going to do what? Write you a check. Why? Because that's what they do. This is not hard to figure out. The problem is we're so busy saying, well, um, the United States workers has to pay don't have to pay taxes or they do have to pay taxes but i don't care what they have to do i ain't got nothing to do with me see but i do know this the 1040 form talks about um income tax if income's not defined then i can't pay it now let me ask you a question do you know why they call it a 1040 form well i thought it was income no abraham lincoln sold bonds he bankrupted the country. Guess what kind of bonds they were? 1040 Cut bonds. Now. They're 1040 bonds. So so when you do a 1040, you're, that's where the gift comes. You do a 1040, they're, you're telling them, I want to pay back the bonds that Abraham Lincoln gave. 
you'll never get them paid because they don't make the interest. The interest is now more than our economy is. So what's happened is, again, it's all done through deceit. See? Now, what I do, I'm just an idiot, but what I do when I go to court, the first thing out of my mouth is, do you have jurisdiction? When they say yes, I hand them a glossary page. That's it. I'm done. Because as soon as they say something to me, if they mention a word that's on my glossary page, that's how I'm defining it. They're going to say that isn't how we do it. Okay, no problem. Since I don't know what you're talking about, they can ask me any question they want. See, I'm going to answer it the only way I can. I ain't got a clue. So if they ask me what my first name is, I'm going to tell them. Um, 1965 Chevy Impala. What? Yeah, I talked to you. Ask me what was my first car. Why? Because they're not using my definitions. And now they're speaking a language I don't speak, like my dubulator switch. I made that up. That doesn't exist. So you can't go get it. Why? It doesn't exist. Until somebody says, what is it? Well, they don't exist. That's where we got them, see? It's all done by um, uh, understanding the language, and we've gotten a long ways from that now. We don't, we don't do that. Have I answered your question? Yeah, pretty much. I'm on the website now. I'm looking at the documents. I see what you're talking about, about there the is. filings of it. There you go. You, you answered my question. I'm through talking, and I've, no problem. other people probably won't talk. I appreciate okay, your time. You. No problem. Thank, Thank you for being here tonight. Yep, yep. Has anybody else got a question? Next. Terry. Terry, it's Jimmy in Colorado Republic. That's a good place. Yeah. Hey, I got a quick question for you. Regarding the uh, – we, we got our court order from the U.S. tax court, and I'm trying to help a family member – get their social security benefits restored, which were uh, completely garnished 100% due to a uh, federal tax lien uh, a few years back. And so we have a court order now uh, from the U.S. Tax Court, from the chief judge, and we got our certified copies as well. Uh, have you come across anybody that successfully has been able to get yes. their social security benefits restored? Yes, but... You can't do it, and the reason you can't do it because your status is a uh, Colorado. What did you call it? Colorado uh, Republic. Republic. Yeah, that's that's where I am. I'm helping. I'm helping my mother who's down in the okay. Texas. I understand, yeah. but see, if you're in the Colorado Republic, <laughs> see, you see, that's yeah. you. That's yeah. your yeah. status. Okay, that's your status. Yes. Let me ask you a question: Are you a taxpayer? Yes. <laughs> See, I've listened so, to your calls before. I know this one. All right. See, 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 you can't be you can't be a Colorado Republic and a taxpayer. Uh, an oxymoron. Yeah. What I'm trying to tell yeah, you, it is. Okay. Instead of you know, I I don't have anything against anybody. Believe me. Okay. But but I hear people say all the time. You know, I went to court and I tell them I'm here by special appearance. Why are you there by special appearance? Well, because general appearance gives them jurisdiction. It can't. Mm -hmm. That's, in, that's mm -hmm. impossible. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you this mm -hmm. question. Have you ever worked for yourself, ever in your lifetime, ever worked, had a job where you worked for yourself? Mm. I'll, I'll say yes. It's impossible. You're lying to the people. You, <laughs> you can work as yeah. yourself. See, you can work yeah. as yourself. Yeah. But how do but you not for yourself. yourself. You, there you go. See, this, I yeah. understand. You know, I'm a butthole yeah. when it comes to this. I understand that. No, but this is what they're doing to us, see? They're, they're asking yeah. us questions, and we answer them. Well, you yeah. just shot yeah. yourself in the foot, see? Mm -hmm. so, okay, I'm going to shoot you. Do you want to get shot with a 9mm or a 45? What do you want to get <laughs> shot with? Neither. See? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's part of the question. What do you want me to shoot you with? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> See, but we're, but that's what we're doing. That's what I'm trying to do. See. Yes. Yes. Uh, but mm -hmm. when I'm in court with them, when I'm in court with them, they, man, they they they're all out of breath. You know, they're, they're trying mm. to me. They don't understand. But yet, it makes sense to me. But I I when I have a conversation with some people, they 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 think that huh that doesn't make any sense. Well, I can tell you right now, what we've been doing in the last 30 years hasn't worked. All of a sudden, we have something that works. And the only thing that's different is I'm applying the law, and it's not about me. Yes. See?
Because if I fall right. off the roof, it's gonna, I'm going to go down too. So it doesn't matter who it is, see? Mm-hmm. What matters is, see? So what the point that I guess I'm trying to make is um, um, do, do federal employees have to pay ta- uh, 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 federal income tax? Yes. Okay. What is federal income tax? Tell me what federal income is, if you will. <clears throat> well, that's a good question. Okay, then. Then how can you say yeah. yes? Right, right. See, you can't say yes. Mm-hmm. You're saying yes because right. 6331A says federal employees. Well, federal right. employees have to pay income tax. That's correct. The 1040, mm-hmm. it's not in, it, the, the income's not defined. And neither right. is it in the booklet. So what are they paying income on? It says salary, tips, et cetera. I made 700000 et cetera, last year. Mm. So what did I get paid in? Et cetera. Mm-hmm. Et cetera. So mm. what's, the tax, what's the tax rate on et cetera? Mm. <laughs> See? Zero. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. No. Doesn't exist. Again. Doesn't exist. There, Undefined. No. See? I'm not making yeah, a legal yeah. determination because I'm not an attorney. That's what I do to right. them. Do you want me to pay tax? I sure do. Make more than glad to. I'll be more mm-hmm. than happy to pay it. The mm-hmm. problem is, what are you paying tax on? Your income. No problem. Mm-hmm. Now, go to it. See, it's it. not in their book. They're right. going to tell you. It's a, now, they're going to tell you. I've had them tell me. Well, it's a, it's a uh, mechanism of exchange or, what, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget what they call it. It's a, um, uh, anyway, it's a mechanism of exchange. So here's my question. You let me drive your truck, I'll paint your house. So now your truck's money. Your truck is income. Well, what about somebody mm. else who doesn't have your truck? See, it, mm. it has to be the same for everybody. That's, yes. that's why it's, see? So until they define mm-hmm. federal income, we can't pay tax on it. That's just my opinion. Right. Okay. Understood. Now, when I was indicted, that's what I did. I stood there and told him, I said, man, I'm ready to pay right now. I don't know what to pay on. Well, you paid on your income. No problem. What's my income? Well, salary, tips, et cetera. I made et cetera. I made 100000 et cetera. Mm-hmm. What, what was it I made? See? Now they can't answer it. That's yes. what I'm telling you. Right. That's why my glossary yes, yes. page and my opinion is good. So yes. um, have, I, have I answered your question? Well, uh, mostly, yes. I'm, I'm in full understanding of, uh, of your discussion here. Uh, what about the restoration of the Social Security, uh, the old, what they call the okay. old age payments? Okay, now, here's what you have. You have a court order. You had a certified copy. You said you had it. Yes. Now, okay, now do a 12277, do a cover letter, and mail it in. That's a, a certified release lien. Then, then send it to send that cover letter with your uh, court order to the Social Security Department. They're going to say we can't. Right. We got to do what the IRS says. No problem. Right. Now they got a problem no problem because I have a court yes. order and they got a said. Which one's more powerful, man? I, I tell you what, I, yeah. I I swing for the fences every time. So yeah, send yeah. your court order. Do a do a cover letter. In other words, yeah. here's the court order. Okay, do your and, yeah. and here's who what they said and this is what needs to be done. Mm-hmm. That's what we're doing. Yeah, and then we hi, we highlight it and then send it. And so what's you happening? Direct them. That's right. See, um, yeah. see, Other. I'm a contractor, but I don't I don't do the nailing myself. So so I yeah. direct my guys so that we get enough done that I can make any so I can make yeah. money. So that's what we're doing. So Yeah. And if they don't comply, they'll be in contempt of court. There you go. Then you can take there them to go. the federal go to the federal and I'm gonna tell you what my experience is if you sue the Social Security Administration in United States District Court for being in mm. contempt of court because you got a court order, they're gonna subpoena mm. the IRS. Guess who's not mm. coming? <laughs> See? Yep. So so yep. now, what did the IRS say? Well, they said to take it. Well, where are they? See, I make fun of them. Yeah, yeah. Well, where are they? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, See? right. And so Great. you have to get your argument proper. See? Yes. I understood. Yeah. It's all about the words. Well, I don't know <laughs> if it is or not, okay? I'm not sure it is, but, but it's, <laughs> it's all about, the, you know, 
when they're telling you something, you know, you got to be able to understand what they're saying. And if, if they're speaking a language you don't speak, you have to have it translated. The problem is, how do you know the translator is translating it like it's they're saying it? Say right. right. Yeah. Understood. So I don't give awesome. them that opportunity. I take my own translator with me. Here's my translator. We're not using it. No problem. See? There you go. Mm-hmm. It's great stuff. Thank you, Carrie, very much. No I, I love problem. your calls. I love what you're doing. This was uh, I had a tax lien remo- removed uh, success story. Uh, our blog is uh, texasrepublic.wordpress.com. Our website is thetexasrepublic.com. Our email address is oneyellowroseenterprises at gmail.com. Our YouTube profile is, uh, this is the link, app because uh, YouTube doesn't allow us to have a customized URL until we have over a certain number of subscribers. And follow us on Twitter at, te- at Texas Republic for you and at we are Texians. On my part, I had a tax lien for 2012 and been fighting them and challenging jurisdiction and all this stuff. And 45 letters later, I come across you guys, you and Ed, and uh, problem solved in a month. Absolutely amazing. It, well, no, yeah, so. it, it's because it's not about us and it's about no, the law. See, and we're right. what we're trying to do here is give you a different way of thinking about it. See? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. But, yeah, now, just, just for the fun of it, let me ask you a question. When was the last time you used a phalange? Define phalange. I don't need to. I'm asking you the question. When was the last time you <laughs> used a phalange? I can't answer that unless I know what a phalange is. See how simple that is? What's wrong with that? A phalange <laughs> is a finger or a toe. See? Mm-hmm. In other words, mm-hmm. all we have to do is know what it is. Then I can answer the right. question. And and right. yet, the more you ask them to define it, the farther they get from the center. It yes. it's not to their it's not to my their advantage if I ask them I don't know what it is. But I want to show you what I'm talking about. Um, I bought bananas went down to twenty four cents so uh, a pound. So I bought a bunch of uh, bananas. Now, do you know what color bananas are? <laughs> well, everybody would say yellow. I'm not sure I will. Right. Okay. (laughs) Here's the problem. I bought a bunch of green ones, so they're not bananas. Mm -hmm. What happens when you when they're yellow and you don't eat them all? Then they're brown. So they're either green, yellow, or brown. See, we have to know what they're asking. That's all. Yes. So when I ask you a question, if you don't ask me what it is, I'm going to assume that because you didn't answer me. See, and if you don't, right, when right. you're in there and they say something, just just say I object. Now you can appeal. It don't matter yes. as long as you get an objection, exactly. then you can appeal. Absolutely. Thanks for, the call. Thanks for yeah. the call. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Carrie. Appreciate it. <laughs> Carrie, I have a question. A lot. Who is this? This is Philip in South Florida. That's fine. I thought it was somebody else. Your voice has a has an accent like I recognize somebody else, but it's not him. Yes, go ahead. I think a couple months ago you were talking about a substitute for return. Is that correct, or, or am I mistaken? I've talked about it, but they can't do one. Well, that's that's what that was my recollection. Can you tell me a little bit more about why not? Okay. First of all, the substitute for return is going to be done by the CID agent. The CID is Criminal Investigation Division. Are you in front of a computer by any chance? I am. Okay. If you would, put in Title 26, Section 7608. Why that's coming up, I'll tell you why. Because, you know, you have two, two sides of this you got the administrative side and you have the enforcement side. Who's going to do the, all the enforcing? <clears throat> Would be the enforcement, wouldn't it? Yes. Now, that was uh, Title 26, Section... 7608. And this is why. Go ahead and read it. Authority of Internal Revenue. Now, wait a minute. Wouldn't you think that would be important? Yes. 
Okay, then let's read what it says. Okay, Section A, Enforcement of Subtitle E and Other Laws Pertaining to Liquor, Alcohol, Tobacco. Stop right there. Uh, so, E, that's enforcement. Where does E get its jurisdiction from? Uh, 27 CFR. How do you know that? <laughs> uh, I, I've been brutalized by the, the no, IRS. Just, you just read it. Read it again. Well, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, that's under Title 27. Title 27. But it says right there, E, anybody in the E, enforcement of the Internal Revenue Service, gets its jurisdiction from alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. That's the reason they can't do it. An SFR comes from the enforcement because administrators can't enforce it. They can't enforce. So all the enforcement comes from E. They get their alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. So the question is, if you work for the post office and you get a paycheck, is any of that alcohol, tobacco, and firearms? No. Then that's why they can't do it. So if you got if you get if you're getting charged with willful failure to file, guess who charges you with willful failure to file? CID. Exactly. What? But CID is what? What are they? What? What section do they get? Do they come out of? E. Yep. Subtitle E. There it is. Now, how do you know that? Okay. Do you know what a pocket commission is? Well, I've heard of it. Okay. A pocket commission, they're going to open it up. It's like a wallet, a pair of glasses in it. They open it up. It's got their badge in it, got their ID in it, got their picture in it, and it's got their employee identification number in it. And let's say it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It'll be an A or an E. The badge on an A normally has a red background on it, and on the E it has a green. And I, I'm telling you that because I've seen a lot of them, but they change it from time to time. So if the CID, you ask him, can I see your pocket commission? When he shows it to you, you write it down. If it has an E in it, read him that. So if you have to go to a summons and you get to the summons and there's six agents in there, you can bet there's going to be a couple of E's. So you ask them, which of you guys are E's? They'll show you. Hand that to them. See ya. See ya. Bye. Now they got A's. A's have no jurisdiction over diddly squat. That's okay. my opinion. Now, we have, I have where we challenged them, and we asked for the pocket commission, and I recorded it. So I have a recording of us in the IRS building or in the IRS room, and we asked them about the pocket commission. <laughs> and and uh, well, about 15 minutes into it, he says, we're done with this. This is bullshit. Get out of our office. So we left. It didn't matter to me. That's what I was trying to do. See, what we have to do is we have to be on offense. Now, let me show you what I'm trying to say. Are you familiar with football? So if I use a football analogy, would you understand it? Well, it's according to whether it's uh, American football or English football. See, <laughs> or rugby. See, do you see how simple that is? Why don't we just do that with them? When they say to you, you got willful failure to file, right? What are you? What pocket? Let me see your pocket commission. If they're an E, then you hand them seventy six oh eight. Here, buddy. See you later. Have a nice have a nice weekend and leave. Why? He don't have jurisdiction. Why? He gets his jurisdiction. It tells you right there: alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. So if I don't sell alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, how is he even in the picture? What's he doing here? See? Well, without that knowledge, it's intimidating to deal with them. Oh, well, yeah, it is. But, you know, it's real intimidating with them. It sure is. I, I told this story. I don't know if I did or not here or not. But I had an IRS agent show up at my door, knocked on the door, and I said, hey, hi. She says, uh, he, he says, um, I'm here to see Terry. And I said, well, I'm him. I said to him, I said, do you have a gun? He said, yes. I said, leave it in the car. He said, no, I can't. I said, oh, okay. 
leave it in the car. He said, I can't. I said, no problem. Come in and have a seat. I t- brought him in, and he sat at my table. I went to my gun safe, and I brought out a, a, an assault rifle, and I laid it on the table. He said, what are you doing with that? I said, you're bringing in a known killer. The government you work for made this statement, guns kill people. I asked you <laughs> if you had a gun. You said yes. You brought a known killer into my house. He says, well, what's that? I said, that's an arm. That ain't a gun. That's an arm. I have a right to keep married. <laughs> he goes, well, I, 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 I said, okay, the front door is right there. Take your, take your killer, your known killer, and put him in the car. Your options. Don't care. And he, he stood there. He stood there with his jaw open. I said, see ya. And he didn't know what to do. He doesn't know. See, he, what is he going to do? He told me he brought in a known killer. He brought it into my house. Does that make sense? Okay, it does. Fake? Fake? Would you let would you let some of Sam in your house? Oh no. Why not? He's dangerous. See? Why would I let, why would I bring in a known killer? The government said guns kill people. Do you have a gun? Yes. I'm a people. My kids are people. My wife's a people. See, I don't want a, a people killer in my house. There's people that live here. So, you see, it, I don't know what to say. I mean, it, to me it makes perfect sense. But then again, I'm a, I've been told many times that I'm a nut job, so. Well, I want to become a nut job just like you. <laughs> well, well, uh, we're trying. We're trying. Me and Ed's trying our best to 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 get this going for you. Well, so uh, what you've been saying the last few months—it's the first time I've ever heard anything where you can put the IRS on the run. So I'm thankful to well, know you. Well, we thank you. Well, I thank you for that. But now they're not on the run, but but they see uh, they don't know what my brother used to say. They don't know if their ass is punched or bored. And the reason for it is because they say stuff. Then when I what, me, I'm dumb enough that I question everything. I don't understand. So when they show up, I give them my glossary page. They look at it and say, we're not using that. No problem. Did you file a tax return? Yeah. Where at? Well, uh, I put it in the back of my truck and I drove down the road. So I'm, re- I'm returning it to the earth. See? Then if you don't use my words, I don't know what you're saying. So it's whatever I say it is. See? Now, is that glossary page available to us? Uh, I would imagine we could make it. What we could. Ed, do you have it, or do I need to send it to you? No, I got it. All I got to do is ask for there it. You go. Just ask for it. I'll, re- what I'll request it. To do, okay. Well, I'm not telling you it's an all-inclusive. What I'm trying to do is when you see it, you're going to say, boy, that's unbelievable. See, I was a young man when I started down this path. The problem that they have is they don't know how to how do you deal with a guy like me. See, now what they're doing is our schools they put you in a box, then they give you a question, then they throw in this the dominoes. You go through the dominoes until you find the one that fits it the best. That's it. Then you go to the next box. The problem is that's not the best answer. It's the best answer they gave you. So what they're doing is they're telling you how to think, what's up, what's down, see? And what I'm doing is I go in there and I don't, you know, the domino, that ain't the best answer, see? The best answer is blue. You don't have a blue one in there. Well, we don't use them blue. Well, then I don't know what to tell you. I'm confused. Tell me what's going on. See, what what I tell them all the time is is uh, um, I'm confused because I'm really a dumb guy. I'm stupid. I said, when I was in the seventh grade, they made me ride the short bus. Then I don't say no more. See? What did, what did I just tell them? What did I just tell them? Well, you suggested that uh, you're mentally challenged. There you go. I'm mentally challenged, so you're going to have to tell me something. Well, you want us to get you an attorney? 
I told the judge this the last time I went. I said, why would I want an attorney? The prosecuting, he's an attorney, and you're an attorney, right? He said, yeah. I said, we got two dumb asses in here now. All the third will do is just mix them. They'll just screw everything up. <laughs> See? All I want to do is be able to speak the language that they're talking. See? Okay. Hello, now, Carrie. <laughs> yeah. Uh if anybody wants that glossary, you just email me and request it. <laughs> See? And we're, we'll give it out. <clears throat> what I want to show you is what they're doing is this. The guy that was just talking to me, do you, are you still on the line? I'm here. Okay. Because of this call tonight, I want you to send me 700. Mm -hmm. Okay. 700 what? I'm not going to tell you, but if you don't send it, I'm going to take your house, your car, and your Social Security. See how simple that was? All you did is ask me, well, what is it? <laughs> See? Why don't we do that to them? It's they, because they intimidate us. Well, I know. They, meet, they do me too. But see, uh, uh, if, how do I say this? Okay, they're not talking to me. See? Because they're, you know, when they ask me, okay, let me ask you this. Are you, um, um, are you a male or a female? I can't tell on the phone because my phone's not that great. I'm just going to try to show you what they're doing. Are you a male or a female? Neither. There you go. So the only other question I could do is say, well, then what are you? Man. See? Now, see? That's what I'm doing. See? Now, all men, all men are, are males, but not all males are men. That's where they got it. See, they, they say something to us, and then we, we think, well, I know what they're talking about. Me, I never know what they're talking about. I don't care what they ask me. If I don't understand, I give them my glossary page. If I give them my glossary page and they're not using it, then what are they using? Well, we're conditioned to answer a question no matter what. Well, I understand that, see? I, but, and I do answer it, but I only answer what they ask. That's where right. they're at the disadvantage. Okay, that's where they're at the disadvantage. See, I, I, you know, I, I, I try not to make stuff up until I get there because uh, what I found out is if you don't know, you're better off, see. Mm -hmm. But um, but but what we're what we're trying to do is just put uh, some tools in your hand. They're not all inclusive. There's other things you can do. But I'm really having a lot of trouble because people that I talk to during the day they want to argue with me and say, "Well, I've been doing this for 30 years, and it's always been about me." Well, in the last 30 years, tell me what you have co accomplished. Well, uh, that's what I thought. In the last, me and Ed's been doing this about a year, maybe a little bit more. In the last year, we've got probably close to a thousand people stopped their in. Their, we've stopped uh, stuff being taken from them. So I don't know which one, which one you want to be part of. But you, you pick your own. It's your stuff. You pick it. I could care less. I'm not, you know, I'm not an attorney, and I can't make a legal de a determination. Well, I so, definitely want to be in the winning crowd. Well, we're trying. But let me ask you a question. Um, what's in, tell me, do you know what income is? Hmm. I think I've heard you, you reference uh, Title 31. See? Th that was federal income. Uh-huh. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Don't forget to like this video. And don't forget to click the bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified when there's a new upload. Here's the front page of the channel. The uh, bottom arrow is pointing at the subscribe button that's normally red until you uh, click on it. And this one uh, turns white after you subscribe. And the, the right one uh, is the arrow.
uh, uh, the, the top arrow is pointing to the bell. Now, the bell doesn't show up until after you click the subscribe button, and then the bell will show up. And that way, you can be notified of new uploads. See? The point that I'm trying to make is, what is it we're trying to do? Educate us. That's it. So, think about this for a minute, okay? Do you know what a humidor is? I think I do. All right. Since you think you do, tell me what you think it is. Well, the humidor that I'm involved with is uh, a device I use to to maintain humidity to keep my cigars good. Wonderful. So, so then tell me what a cigar is. Since you brought it up. Well, I have I have three answers. All right. It's a champion racehorse. Uh, it's something that, that made Monica Lewinsky feel good. And in my hands, something that I'll smoke to make me feel good. All right. I burnt some popcorn last night, and I smoked up the kitchen. So you're telling me it's a bag of burnt popcorn? Well, no. That's what you said. You well, I said see? in my hands, when I smoke it, it makes me feel good. That's right. See? But, but see, what you covered as many as I could think of. But uh, there's a, in my neighborhood, there's a street, and it's called Tuba. So I figured that was tied to it. That has to be cigar, too, because in, in, in Tuba, they make, see, what I'm saying to you is, as long as I know what it is, we're okay. Where the okay. problem comes... Where the problem comes, now, think about this a minute. Your car, you get up in the morning and it won't start. Right next door to you is a transmission shop. 25 miles away is, is, the, is, a, is the best mechanic in the state. You could hook, if you hook your car up to it and you call him and you tow it over there, he'll get you right in. What are you going to do? Well, I have to assess why the car won't start. If it's a transmission issue, I go to the guy next door. If it's something else, I have to find someone who has the capability to repair it. Okay. I worked in a transmission shop. People bring us cars all the time. You go up there and they don't start. We put a battery charger on it and hit it and it starts right up. What is a transmission man? What is he called? A transmission mechanic, well, right? Right. Okay. Yep. So then, what is the guy that starts the car? What would he be called? Well, a mechanic. See, why wouldn't you just go next door first? If then they can't start it, get it towed in. There's that box. Get out of that box. See what I'm saying? You hit All the right. starter, and it, you hit the starter because transmission shops. He's oh, it's the battery. I can put one of those in for you. He calls, they deliver, puts it in, and you leave. And you pay for the battery, and they, so you pay 150 bucks or whatever it is for the battery. You tow your car 30 miles, it's $150. You get there, and he puts the battery in for another $150. To me, $300 is more than 150 When starting of the car is something very minor, and a transmission mechanic mm -hmm. could probably start it. See, there's that mentality that I have. I, it don't make me no difference. I don't, you know, I, I'll take it there. If he can't start it, he's not going to charge me. Well, I didn't start it, so you owe me 100 bucks. He said, I can't get it started. It's above my pay grade. No problem. Hook it up with the hook and head out. Now you have no choice. I wear out all my choices before I do. See, I'm not going to make a decision until I know what the heck is going on. Right. Does that make Okay, that's all I'm saying. So we just need to, you know, we, we need to stop thinking about that kind of stuff. See, and, and where the problem comes, they ask us this question that you have to defend the negative. So let me ask you this. Have you stopped cheating on your wife? 
What is cheating? <laughs> see? So what happens is, what happens is, see, if you don't know, you can be in deep trouble quick, see? Yep. You act. Yep, you ask a woman what cheating is. You know, she's going to say sleeping with another woman. I say, well, thank good for me. I go over there and I bang the woman, and then I come home. I sleep at the house, so I ain't done nothing wrong. Okay? It's all in the way you define it. Anyway, yes. do you, uh, thank, I hope I answered your question. You did. Thank you very much. No problem. Anybody else have a question tonight? Thank you for being I have a question. Please ask it. Yes, sir. About the uh, tax court process, is that the same for uh, like a frivolous thing that they're alleging? I don't know. You can only go to the tax court if you're a man. Women, they don't have jurisdiction. <laughs> well, it's actually, it's for my son, so that's a good thing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding you anyway. Okay, when you say if the fri it's frivolous, see, you didn't give me enough information. What's frivolous? Well, they alleged that the return was frivolous. Man, I, you're not going to believe this. You know what I would say? You hear, I say this to them all the time. I agree with you. <laughs> I do agree. <laughs> yeah, it's frivolous. So give me a reminder. So, why, would you, why would you guys have a frivolous return? Why would you do a return, have a form that's frivolous? Now, you see what happened is, have you stopped kicking your neighbor's dog? I'm going to that. See, I'm going to reverse it on them. Which neighbor? Well, the left one. I ain't, they, ain't, they ain't got a dog. See, now they've got to scramble around. So I would put together a cover letter saying, man, thank you so much. Man, I have been worried about my taxes for the last 30 years. Now I know they're frivolous. Thank you for the insight, and send it back to them. That's what well, happened. we've we've gone through a lot of stuff, and they, you know, like doubled down for multiple years, five thousand, five thousand, you know, uh, for like thirty thousand, and now until these are paid, then they say, well, we're holding what they they have uh, withheld. So no problem. He, okay. What you do is. Go do your W-4, married in 25. Now, they're going to still keep it, but they're going to get a whole lot less. But in the meantime, can we do this tax court thing? Well, of course you can. You can do whatever you want. Okay, so it would apply, I'm asking. We, we well, might have some, some luck with this. I don't know. So far, everybody has done it, had luck, everybody. Let me ask you a question. I want you to think about this now. I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to think about it long and hard. <laughs> I want you to go in the front yard or your backyard, and I want you to get a dog turd, but I want you to pick it up by the clean-in. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to pick it up by what? The clean-in. Oh, <laughs> Okay. Well, impossible. See, that's what they're telling you. Your your argument's frivolous. I know. I know it is. How in the world can it be frivolous if what they're saying is not frivolous? See, if I'm talking about a Chevy, and you say, well, that's about a Chevy. Well, of course it is. So it was about a Ford. I'd be talking about a Ford. That's, that's what I do. I just tell them, I say, man, thank you for bringing that up to me. Um, now that you talk to me about being frivolous, send me my money. Because now, not only do you not have jurisdiction, but you're frivolous too, and you've admitted it. See? Now they, see, they're always on the defense with me. They don't know how to deal with a guy like me. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a nut job. You know, you heard the old saying, the attorney won't ask you a question unless she knows the answer to it. They don't like to ask me a question because they, they, they know the answer, but they still don't get it. They still don't get it. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Well, could I ask you, uh, the, the process, the whole process through the tax court, is that all handled through the mail? And, yeah. Or do we need to? Okay. And then uh, I heard a lady uh, another week ask about a phone call, that everybody gets a phone call from the tax yeah. court. That's right. They're going to call you and, and tell you. They're going to tell you that we're going to put in a motion to dismiss it. Do, do you have a problem with that? Nah, go ahead and do it. 
It doesn't matter what you say. It, it's it, the, the phone call takes about 30 seconds. All oh, okay. Because the, just, rules, the rules say they have to call you and tell you that they're going to put in a motion. So they call you. If you don't answer, they leave a message. If you want to call them back, call them back. They fulfilled their, their deal. If you don't feel comfortable calling them back, don't do deadly squat. Oh, okay. Now, you're going to send it to them. And, and the funny part about it is they give you a form to do it. We have a form society. This government we have is done by forms. So okay. fill out their form. Now, do you know why the word form means model or skeleton to be used in a court of law? In a, in a judicial proceeding, but basically a court of law. So you have a form. You fill it out. You send it in. Now it can be used in the court. So okay. I, I say all that to say this. Um, again, I, I'm, I, I'm way off base here, but I made up my own form. See? What I, what I would do in the case that they said it's frivolous, I would take my form. I would fill my form out, and I would change it to say, now that I got this, you said it was frivolous. What part of your uh, form is frivolous? If you don't answer it, the whole thing's frivolous. You've acquiescence to me. I agree with you. There's no question. It's frivolous. But what part's frivolous? See? In other words, I would set it up to where it's to my advantage. Then I would put in there, uh, sorry about that, but if you don't answer me in the next 15 days, 21 days, your acquiescence, and you agree with me, your shit's frivolous. Okay. Well, in the meantime, we have done a conditional acceptance and haven't didn't get a response from them. Well, you, that's that's an acceptance for value. So, you know, good okay. luck that. I, I don't do that. Okay, I don't do okay. that because because I can't, I haven't found in the law yet where it says you can do one of those. HJR one ninety two lets you tells you about that, but. Like I said, you know, I try to stay with their policies and procedures. Mm -hmm. That way, um, that mm -hmm. way, um, when they violate it, then see they should have known better. See, um, they never um, they sent a notice of intent to levy, but nothing ever got levied. No, they, nothing was taken. I guess there was nothing to take. But well, uh, if, you, if you want me to, you want me to write them a letter and tell them tell them to come get it now. <laughs> to come get what? I don't know. You said you didn't get your levy. If you're bitching, I can fix that for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's okay. <laughs> so that's okay. Good. So we're going to give this a give this a shot. Okay. Now <clears throat> go on. Go on to the United States Tax Court. Go to documents. And download the uh, there's a it's a what is it a um, package. I, uh, I actually have your your form your example already. Yeah. All and right, I've got there my... you go. See that? There you go. So I'm ready. I'm ready. Well, then do it. Then do it. <laughs> uh, one more question, if you don't mind. I do. I mind, noticed. Go ahead. I do mind, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the the letter that we send to the tax court, we're getting like to the I'm sorry, not the tax court. I'm talking about the the jurisdiction letter. Um, the example that you gave, it was just to the the court clerk. So that suffices for getting what we need from the the judge that we're not in the jurisdiction. Okay. Or that, what, that, gonna, what I did was I wrote a letter to the United States District Court asking the court if they had jurisdiction over the IRS agent, IRS, or any part of the IRS. They wrote me back years ago and said, no, they have nothing to do with it. Well, when I got indicted, I used that letter. And they said, well, we have it. I said, okay, then someone's lying here. Someone's lying. You are or they are. Let's subpoena everybody in a room and we'll ask everybody. So I become a real pain in their ass because I, I don't really care what they say, see, because I already know what I, where I'm going. And so um, write a letter to the uh, United States District Court asking them if they have jurisdiction and then put in there. They're going to write you back. Now, this is what was really funny. They wrote back to me and says, we don't give legal advice. So then I went in there and said, really? I have a friend of mine that went to prison using your court. You put him in jail. So if you don't give legal advice, he's in there illegally. Get him out. 
now we got a problem because, man, I mean, I just wore them them out. They finally uh, stopped answering me, and then I started emailing them. So then they, then they shut my email off, so I started using my other email. I got two emails, so I started using the other one. They finally said, okay, if we tell you, give you the answer, I said, I'll shut my mouth, and they sent it to me. So, but is it, so we're going to have to fight for our letter like that? Maybe. Or people are, I don't know. Oh. Go on their go on their tax go on the United States federal uh court and put in there's a there's a bunch of tabs. One of the tabs has what they do have jurisdiction on. And they list okay. it there. Print it out. Okay. Then, okay. then take that print and then you can write a letter saying, I'm I'm confused on your thing. Here's what it says, but nothing on there says IRS. Do you see? In other words, okay. you can you can you can trick them into answering you too if you want. You know, just think outside the box and just start hammering them. That's what I. That's what I do. Okay. All right. Great. Have I thank you. answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. No problem. Great. Thank you. Yes, sir. We're about out of time. Well, that sounds like a winner to me. <laughs> Listen, to everybody. We're glad you called in tonight. Uh, Our next call will be 26, Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much for being here. It's my pleasure.